Whenever we take a look at professional movies, we always notice the same pattern. Everything is shot professionally, but most importantly, the colors look cinematic. All of this is because they use professional programs to edit their videos. And that's why in today's video, we're going to explore a crucial aspect of using DaVinci Resolve, which will be the importance of using a fixed node structure. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced editor, this video will help you better understand the benefits of a structured workflow and how it can enhance your projects. Also, if you're interested in taking your color grading to the next level, check out my website where I offer a selection of high quality LUTs that will dramatically enhance the look of your footage right away. With an easy integration into DaVinci Resolve and many other editing programs, these LUTs can save you time and give you projects a professional edge. But now let's buckle up and let's dive right in. Before we get into the nitty gritty of node structures, let's take a step back and understand what nodes are in DaVinci Resolve. Nodes are the building blocks of your color grading and visual effects workflows. They allow you to apply various adjustments and effects in a non-destructive and flexible manner. Now, you might wonder why using a fixed node structure is essential, so I will give you a few reasons. First of all, there's consistency. A fixed node structure will enable you to maintain consistency across multiple shots and projects. It helps you keep track of the adjustments made each step, making it easier for you to replicate the same look and feel in different scenes or even future projects. Then there's collaboration. In a professional setting, multiple artists might even work on the same project. A fixed node structure ensures that everyone is on the same page, leading to seamless collaboration and efficient handovers. But there's also modularity and organization that's important. The node-based approach allows users to break down complex grading tasks into smaller, more manageable parts. Each node, therefore, will be focused on a specific adjustment or effect, making it easier to keep track of the changes made and to stay organized throughout the project. And lastly, there is reusability. Fixed node structures can be saved as presets and downloaded, making it easier to apply your favorite looks to other projects with just a few clicks. This can save you time and effort, especially when working on similar projects or clients with specific style preferences. So as you can see, using a fixed node structure in DaVinci Resolve is essential for a variety of reasons. It helps you maintain consistency, collaborate with others, stay organized and reuse your work efficiently. But now pay attention, because we're going through the process of setting up a fixed node structure and I will demonstrate how it can improve your workflow dramatically. It's really important to understand the structure of the structure, so let's dive in. On the main timeline, there are two videos with basic corrections that have already been made. These are exposure, white balance and contrast. Now I will apply my node tree to the clips and tell you about each node along with some tips. To do that, let's go to the gallery, select both of our clips in the clips window and apply our node tree to all clips by middle clicking on it. As you can see, it has been applied to both of our clips. Now you can see my node tree, but don't be scared, I'll explain each node and what it means now. The first node is a noise reduction node, which I use to remove noise from a particular clip if necessary. For example, let's apply some basic noise reduction settings to our clip. Let's see it before and after. And that looks great. There's an entire video about noise reduction on my channel, so you can check that out as well. Now let's imagine the real situation where you need to apply the same settings to other clips on the timeline. And that's where the fixed node structure comes in. Since the nodes in all clips are the same and in their respective places, you can use the ripple node changes to select the clips or ripple node changes to current group options to apply the settings to other clips. To do it, select the clip you want to apply the noise reduction settings to, press the color menu and select ripple node changes to selected clips. And you're done. As you can see, the noise reduction settings have been transferred to our second clip and we didn't need to adjust everything again. You can do the same with all settings. But remember that your node structure in all clips must be exactly the same, so I recommend using a fixed node structure. Next I'll show you how to use other nodes. The EC exposure contrast node is where I adjust the exposure and contrast of the image. Let's make some exposure changes to the first clip as an example. Now we can apply the same changes to our second clip. As we remembered for this, press the color menu and then the ripple node changes to selected clips. The second clip has now applied our changes that we made in the first clip in the exposure node. You can now look at the before and after to see if the changes were actually applied. The next node is white balance and saturation. Now let's make the balance a little bit warmer on the first clip and then use ripple node changes to selected clips with the color menu. Let's see it before and after. 
I use the match node if I need to match the white balance or exposure of clips. I select the clips to be matched, click on the split screen icon, select the clips where I need to make changes and make the necessary adjustments. I use the tweak node to adjust small details such as the medium details. Now let's go over the log HDR node. I use it to make changes with tools like log wheels and HDR wheels. For example, let's go to the log wheel menu and use the shadows wheel to bring up our deepest shadows. Now let's zoom in on our image and take a look at the changes made. You can see this way we only affect the darkest areas of the image. Now let's go over the sky roof node. I use it to change the image where there are many parts of the sky. And the operations with the sky can be repeated from frame to frame. Let's imagine you want to reduce the exposure of the upper part of the frame. Use the gradient mask, reduce the offset exposure and with the color menu select ripple node changes to select the clips and transfer our settings to our second frame. Now the curves and warp node is used to manipulate curves or the warp tool. Let's use the warp tool to change the colors of the leaf. Using a dropper to select the leaves and shift it a little bit towards the greens. Apply the settings for the second clip and let's see it before and after. Also, here we can, for example, remove the saturation of our leaves with the U versus saturation curve. Now select the color that we want to affect and reduce its saturation. By means of the already known color, ripple node changes to selected clips, we can transfer settings to other clips in one second. Now let's go over the skin node. As the name suggests, it's used to make the changes to the skin if necessary. Let's use the qualifier tool to select our skin, blur the edges with the blur radius tool, clean up the image with clean white, limit the influence of our qualifier with a mask and make its tracking. Now with the offset, decrease the exposure and make the balance cooler. In this way, we affect only those areas that we have pre-selected. Now let's look at the before and after. And that looks much better. Now the highlight node has a pre-configured qualifier in which the brightest areas of the image are highlighted so we can very quickly change the brightest areas of the image. For example, decrease the highlight value and look at the before and after adjustments. Now the shadow node does the same thing as the previous node, only this time it affects the shadow areas of the image without affecting the brighter areas. Now let's raise the shadows a little bit with the offset wheel and we can see the changes in the shadows on the scope. Now the next node is the matte node and it is used when you want to add textures or grains to your image with external textures for example. And then the compound node can be very handy when you need to create a lot of nodes but you don't want to mess up your fixed node structure. The HSV node is already pre-configured to increase saturation using color space HSV. And in the RGB mixer settings, preserved luminance is also turned off, so you can immediately increase the saturation to level you want, reducing the transparency of this node if necessary. So let's see it before and after. Then use the empty nodes for any other changes. The left center right node has a pre-installed power window in the circle shape, so you don't have to create it every time. You can quickly use one of the preset settings. Then the vignette node is a node with a prepared vignette that you can modify a bit and use right away without drawing it from scratch. So let's look at the before and after and transfer it to our second clip with color, ripple node changes to selected clips. Then we have the left, up, down, right nodes in which we have gradients on the left, right, bottom and top. So we can very quickly make changes to any part of the frame if needed and quickly make it brighter or darker. For example, now we made the frame darker on the left and on the right independently of each other in a couple of seconds. Nodes L and R. In these nodes, we have a square power windows on the left and the right to quickly access and change the areas. For example, let's take the node that is responsible for the right side of the frame, soften one edge of it and increase the exposure with the offset wheel. Now let's look at the before and after. I can use the remaining two empty nodes for any other changes. For example, I can use the pen tool to select an object in the frame, soften the edges and increase the exposure. And then the following nodes have OFX effects installed or a place for them. So there is a node called Elation and it has a pre-installed plugin from the OFX Elation plugin library. So I turn it on and customize it as needed. I have a video on my channel about this plugin which I recommend you watching if you want to learn how to use it. The next node is called Grain and it has the Grain plugin from DaVinci Resolve effects library with my favorite 35mm 200T grain tie pre-installed. Let's turn it on and see the before and after results. The vignette out and vignette in nodes contain vignettes and inverted vignettes for fine-tuning both at the edge or inside of the frame. Let's see the before and after results. In the director of photography and director nodes, we make changes that could come from the operator or director without affecting our previous color correction. So if necessary, we can quickly disable or change these changes. And this is the node structure that I professionally follow. There is so much more in depth to it. So if you want to learn more, check out my other videos. And if you want to color grade like me already, check out the LUTs on my website.